Hey Black Dragons, I'm back to do a stats video for 2023. I will admit 2023, as I'm going to talk about, was not my best reading year. It was a very, very chaotic year, I will say that. Sorry, you're going to hear my puppy barking in the background because we have to put her in the cage. But I just suffered with a lot of focus issues and I think that, that really affected me listening to audiobooks and just me having enough time to sit down and focus on my reading. Which, again, I'm going to tell you guys all my stats. I... Mostly use Goodreads and Storygraph, and I also have a spreadsheet that Cassidy from Covers with Cassidy. I don't know if she's going to do her new one, but if worse comes to worse, I'll just make a copy and do a new one for 2024 because I really, really love her spreadsheet. It has some pretty detailed stats. So I'm going to do Goodreads, um, just like the basic stats on Goodreads, and then I'll do my spreadsheet, and then I'll do Storygraph. And if I have photos of them, I will also attach them um, just because I'm a visual learner. And I like to see things, but I have yet to learn how to put stuff on screen. So you'll see me pop up in, in, in and out of frame. So on what I read, just book-wise, just like monetary-wise, I read 211 books in 2023, which I think is pretty good. Um, of course, would I like it to be 225 like the previous year? Yes. But again, the focus issues did hinder my reading ability, especially at the tail end of last year and also at the beginning of this year. So yes, that is where we wound up. Um, but now let's go into Covers with Cassidy, all of her stats, which I find these interesting. So the first graph you're going to see is books that I read. Um, and I will touch a photo here. This shows me that my most read book month was actually April, which I read 23 books, which actually is not surprising because that is Romathon month and would have closely led behind January and August that I had 21. 21 for August was when I traveled to Italy, but I also was a part of the amazing readathon and January also always kick off the year with a bang. Um, my lowest read reading month was March. I don't remember why March was so lowly read, but I only read 11 things. Um, and my second lowest month that I had was June, which is fifth. Actually, no, but the lowest month was March, which is actually surprising. I would have thought it would have been September. Um, and then the most common number that I read between months was 19 or 20 or 15. Um, October, November, I had... October, November, and December were my lower reading months because I only read like 15 to 17 books. Um, but yeah, so overall, um, the total books I read was 212, and my highest reading month was April, and my lowest meeting reading month was March. Also in April, I was doing Aurelium and the Magical Readathon back-to-back, -back, and it just kind of helped my enjoyment. So the next stat we're going to chat about, which you're going to see a graph, is pages read, and my average pages per Per, per book. And I read seven, 73,370 pages, which is amazing. Um, my average page of the book was 346, which is normally how I read books. That's like the perfect length for me. Um, and no surprise, my biggest number of pages was April and August, which I read around like almost 8,000. So I read like 7,500 and 7,800. 7,500 was in April and 7,800 was in actually in August. So August I actually read more pages, which is actually interesting. Um, and then my lowest page count was in March. I was like, 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 why well, didn't read that much in March? But it was also the first month of my show. Oh, that's what it was. That was when we started rehearsals for my show. And it was a bit chaotic. Um, and then, um, I had all the most months I read between 700 and 600. So that is where he is. And I will touch, you will have seen the graph already, but yeah, I just find it interesting to do that. But yeah, that makes sense that I read, I read the most like 350 page books because that's normally what I try to get. Right? So this is my favorite graph and I'm actually so happy she included this was genres. I will touch a photo here. follow covers with Cassidy my spreadsheet looks a little bit different because I read a little bit more diversely like genre wise like I read YA I read middle grade so I added a ton of genres and when I do my 2024 spreadsheet I'm gonna do the same exact thing I'm gonna add my own genres so my genre 
So I read about 17 genres this month that I track, which is actually very exciting for me. My, my, my genre with the most five stars was romance, which does not surprise me because I listen to a ton of audiobooks. And what I learned this year about myself is that I do like to listen to my romances. I sometimes get bored when I have to physically read them. I read a couple of physical ones this year, but mostly was listening and I really did enjoy my listening game. Um... The books with the biggest percent, I would say, is romance that I read 33 books of, just in general. Um, romance was my highest genre. So 30, so 15% was romance. Um, 11, I read 25 mystery books. And I read 27 YA fantasy. But I think if you combine, like, all of the books together, like... I read 27 YA fantasy, I read 6 fantasy romance, I read... So if you kind of combined everything together, I think I probably read the most fantasy but all, like in all my genres. Um, but, and I still like don't remember how I tracked everything, like what I put in each category. So my most read drama is romance, but if you combine everything together, I would say fantasy in all of the aspects of fantasy, like middle grade, YA, adult, fan row, I think that was probably my most read, but trackable wise, it was definitely romance, which is actually not surprising because I listened to a ton of audiobooks. We'll get to that. Um, um, and what was the one that surprised me? Um, I think I'm middle, my middle grade crayon fantasy, I only read 12. My YA fantasy, I read 27, which was a goal because I think I didn't read as much last year. Um, yeah, so that was pretty, pretty good. So the next set you're going to see is book size, and I will attach a photo here. And this kind of breaks down, was it a medium size, a large size, a small size, and a chunky size? So I say medium size is anything like 300 pages and over. Um, I normally give 400 is large and chunky is like anything that's above that. I probably read the smallest chunky books. I only had four of those. My biggest genre was probably middle, medium, which is 98. I read 39 large and 69 small. I did read quite a few smaller books because I was in the middle of the series, but my cap is normally at 300 pages. So anything less than 300 got to be small. Um, and then the next graph you're going to see is publication date, which I will attach here. No surprise, 2023 was my biggest. I read 51 new releases, which is actually not that bad. One thing I would do want to track this year is how am I buying books and how quick are they coming off my TBR? I haven't tracked that, but I do want to track that this year. Um, I'm going to do that with a Goodreads job or a story graph shelf we will see um but I read 16 books from 2022 16 percent which is 35 which is actually not that bad I read 108 new releases I read 66 backlists and I read two from last year what I mean two from 2024 which it was very very easy I read two books so pretty not that bad but a lot of it a lot of my reading is broken up through new release and backlist which is actually not that not not that surprising. Um, last year also, I always read a lot of last year in January and February because not a lot of new books come out. Um, the next graph you're going to see is format red, and I will attach a photo here. At the end of the year, I started doing mixed media a lot because I just was picking up books that like I wanted to physically re-listen, like read, fit, like listen to, but I had the physical copy. So I read eleven of mixed media. I read eighty physical books, which is actually really impressive. Um, Odd ebooks, I only read thirty, which is not a surprise. Those are mostly all of my eARCs because I just suck at using my Kindle, and I listened to eighty nine audiobooks, which again is pretty pretty good. Um, and then the next one that I'm going to attach or go over is my format, how I acquired them. And I will attach that here. I'll say these stats are a little bit off because sometimes like I would have bought a book, but I read it on neck alley. So I picked the format that I read it. That was kind of how I did it. So I have, I read 27 physical arcs that I had in my possession. I read 10 from Libro FM, I read 63 Owned, 24 from NatGalley, 34 from The Library, 40 from Audible, 
12 from KU, which is actually pretty good. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So that's my format, how I acquired the books. Again, there's always a second format, but I kind of did the one that I read it as. And the next one is I was really excited to track, and this is Parent Publisher. So I will attach the photo here. I was really excited to track this because I was very fascinated to see which publishing house I gravitated the Mord's Toast and I was surprised that 43 of my books came from Penguin. That was surprising to me and I love Penguin. I love a lot of their titles so that's not a big surprise but I read you know 39% of my books came from Penguin. 12 was self plubbed 4 was indie or no how much was indie? 1 was an indie publisher but you know 12 was self plubbed I read um, 15 from HarperCollins 14 from Hachette, 7 from Simon Schuster, 13 from Macmillan, and 43 from Penguin. So I actually have a vlog, a vlog project in the works about Penguin because I have a lot of arcs from them for 2024. So I want to do a project to see if all their picks are wins for me. Um, I also have like my imprints. Um, Berkeley, I think, was the highest imprint that I read, and I read, I don't have a picture for that, but I read 14 Berkeley romances. You could tell I really, really like Berkeley because a lot of the books I read came from there, romance-wise. Everything else, there wasn't, like, a ton. I think I read, um, Thomas and Mercer, I read eight books from that, and that was, like, an Amazon publisher. And I think that's it. A lot of the other ones were, like, little, like, eight or three or four Four with St. Martin's paperback is another one. That was very, very popular. Um, and then my star rating breakdown. Um, I have a t I have the mo actually the most is probably my five star reads. I have 56 five star reads. I think I'm going to attach a section here next year, which is my six star reads. And I'm not really gonna call them six star reads, but those are gonna be books that I would consider on my top reads of the year list. And I think I'm gonna try to start to track that this year. I have 17. 4.5 stars. I have 66 4 stars. I have 44 3.5 stars, 18 3 stars, and I have 1 2.5 stars. So I don't have any 1 stars. At that point, I would probably just DNF. And I don't even really track DNFs just because I honestly forget about them. But yeah, if I didn't touch the graph, here, here it is. The next chat graph I'm going to show you is my series versus standalone, which is the bane of my existence. I'm going to be honest. I'm Horrible at continuing series. But let's just get into it. Here's the photo. I read 39 companion books, which are loosely part of a series that I would say I can, there is a series name. Uh, 93 were series books. A lot of those were starting series. I will say that. I would need to see like how many series I actually finished. Um, but I'll get to that in a second. And I read 77 standalone, which is actually not that bad. I started 63 series. I continued in 47 and I finished 18 series. Um, so that means I started more series that, well, actually, you know what? Maybe I didn't. I think I pretty much, pretty much broke you. Let me do the math. Let's see. I started 63 series and I continued or finished 65. So I broke even a little bit, but I think I could do a little bit better next year. But technically I was a little bit off because some of those I didn't finish it, but I did make progress. I might just make another stat. Like, did I catch up? But I would have to look to see how to do that on the spreadsheet. Um, and then the next thing we're going to look at is representation for authors. And it's going to talk about multiple man and representation of new author. Here's the photo. No surprise, I love to read books by women. I read 171 books by women, which is 81% of my reads. I read 27 books by a man, six books by a multiple, and five by non-binary authors. I read 37 books with representation and 41 books that are new authors to me, which is actually pretty good. So I'm really happy about that. And 
yes, I just, yeah, the, the, uh, the, yeah, yeah, the last thing I tracked was my parent publishers, and that's 43 for Penguin. So now I'm going to take a little bit of a break. I'll be back, and we're going to go through Storygraph, which actually has interesting stats, and I'm really happy I went through a whole year of using them. I think I definitely missed a couple of books in there that were not, like, I just forgot because my numbers don't really even out, but I will do much better in 2024. The next stats I'm going to break down for you is what Storygraph said. Um, and they're just their general stats. I just sort of looked at what they tracked. So according to them, I only read 204 books, which means I missed a few, but that's okay. Um, and according to them, I read 7,000 pages, which I definitely read more, as you saw in my other stats, especially on Nang. I have to figure out how to track audiobooks, but I just don't know how to do that. Um, and they really do moods, which I thought was really, really interesting. So my most read mood was like, was emotional and then adventurous and then lighthearted, which is very, very true. Especially this year, I was really trying to like escape from my own reality for a bit. So those three emotional, adventurous and lighthearted and funny were definitely high. Um, I definitely gravitated towards medium pace books and fast paced book. I definitely struggle with slow paced books. It just doesn't always capture me off the bat. And then kind of, as I said before, I'm more likely to read a book that is 300 to 499 pages um, than anything else. Um, I'm definitely more of a fiction reader, but I did read about six nonfiction books, which I want to increase that a little bit. And then genres, I kind of said before, my most read is romance and fantasy which, okay, I'll take it. But I think, like, overall, if you're looking at sort of all of my books and all of my various genres, I would say fantasy is probably beats it just by a little bit. Um, tags, just because the shelves I have, which I love how they track that. I read the most of my book miss books and my 2023 sequels, which does make sense because I was trying to, those are the books I was most excited to read and ones that kind of captured me. Um, and I read the most print books, not digital and not audio. But again, I don't know how they track that because I don't really say that. Maybe I, there's a feature. I don't know. If you know how to track that in Storygraph, let me know because I would love to know. Um, and then what's the last thing that they track? And then most read authors is Katherine Cowles, T.E. Kinsey, and Lisa Kleipas. So those are the, those are the three authors that I've read the most of, um, which is not a surprise. Um, yeah, and I had a lot of five, and I had my average rating on this platform was a 4.3. I don't know if it tells you on my other thing. What is my, cause that was probably the one that I was like most interested in. Uh, let me just see if it says it. I don't even know if it tells me. I think it did. I think it told me what was my five star rating. Uh, it may not have, it may not have told me what I got. No, it doesn't. But okay, so that's just interesting. I like stats. I think stats are interesting, but I definitely want to like stop putting so much pressure on myself because I just think like I read 212 books. That's a really, really big accomplishment. But I also just need to like let reading be an escape for me, escape from my own reality. And sometimes I struggle with that. So yeah, that was the stats video. Let me know if you like stats. Let me know if you keep track of stats. Um, the stats I want to kind of go forward in is read a little bit more YA fantasy which I always say because I have some series that I haven't read a lot of and I also want to read more sequels and end more series so let me know in the comments if you keep strats if you do a spreadsheet I will link covers with Cassidy below because this spreadsheet was her baby and I hope she puts out one for 2024 but if not I'm just gonna make a copy of it and start again because I love her spreadsheet so I will talk to you guys soon for our next video and let me know how many books did you read this month was it your best read meeting with was it your worst this was kind of a little bit of less than I normally read but hey I read something I read a book I'm so proud of myself so I will talk to you guys soon for another video bye